Thank you, Ben. Yeah, no problem. Great, three o'clock. Wonderful. Yeah. And who do we have in the, the conference room? Naomi Murphy. Naomi Murphy. Hello, Naomi. Good to see you. Thank you. Yeah, I wish I was there with you today. I've been fighting a cold, so I thought it was better to, to zoom in from home. Okay. Yeah, good to see you, though, Naomi. So you're in Ben. I am. Yep. Yeah. And, and then I'm, I'm Greg Cast. Greg, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Well, wonderful. Well, thank you guys for coming today. I'm so happy to, to see you and to meet you. And my name's Molly, and I'm here in Bend. And um, my background's in psychology and religious studies and education, but I'm not a psychologist and I'm not a life coach or anything of the sort, but I've been facilitating um, retreats for the past 20 years or so. And um, I think my biggest teacher are my relationships and my life experiences. And uh, I had a stroke 18 years ago and have a huge amount of gratitude and, um, and overwhelming amount of awe for the caregivers that were with me along the way. So um, what I'm hoping to do is provide space for you. Um, and, and this is space for you to uh, connect, one, with yourselves. I think a lot of times as caregivers, we're overwhelmed um, and don't have time for ourselves. But two, connect with each other. Um, so the format, I think, for the Stroke Warrior meetings are usually to have a, um, a guest speaker come in each meeting. And the hope for us is time and space for you to connect. Um, so while we do that, let's start to ground ourselves. Let's just begin with a moment here. A uh, moment in silence. We'll start just by settling into this space. You made it here together. Maybe settle into your breath, paying attention to that life-giving force. Maybe feeling your feet on the ground. And with a long inhale, and then a long exhale, exhaling it all out. I'm thankful that you're all here today. Thank you for, for um, gathering here together. So um, as I said before, the whole point um, of this time together is, is to have a time and space for you, a space for you to be who you are, um, a space for you to take a breath, a space for us to support each other. Um, one of the things that came to mind is that, that each of you have so much wisdom to share with each other. Um, and, and I think that this time and space is a time and space to share that knowledge, share the wisdom and create community together. So part of that is listening to each other. Um, my background is in Benedictine spirituality and, and he begins by saying, listen with the ear of the heart. And I, I love that phrase. So, um, I think in this space, it's important to listen uh, with the ear of the heart and and speaking from from our place, we all have very different stories um, and very different moments. Uh, and when we share, we can we can share from our space what we know works for us. Um, and striving to be open for new ideas um, and asking questions and um, being patient with each other. So enough about me. I want to learn a little bit about each of you. Um, so let's take a moment and we'll share one, our names, uh, two, a little bit of our background, like our, our story, what brought us here, 
um, maybe a little bit about your daily life, the situation you're in. Um, and then three, how is it possible that you can join today? I think that a lot of us had to, to get um, people to cover us or we had to somehow fit it in. Um, and four, why? Why did you prioritize this? Um, why did you want to be part of this? Um, and that's why we need that extension. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, let's see here. So let's begin with um, with the conference room. I think that we have Naomi and Greg in the conference room. Naomi, do you mind starting us off and then Greg, and then we'll go to Gabriel after that? Okay. Thank my you. Murphy, my husband, Roger, had a stroke three and a half years ago due to a medical procedure. It happened in the hospital and it could have been avoided. And that's something I've had a hard time accepting. And he is a phasic, although he certainly can talk. He just loses um, words from time to time, and it's been frustrating for him. He has other health issues, and this just makes everything else more difficult. But he's independent. He can drive. He can go to the store. He can do what he wants. Um, he doesn't need help with anything on a daily basis. It's just functioning socially. He has to tell people he had a stroke um, <clears throat> because his he his speech is haltering. It's it's not free flowing. So it's just been a journey. And we moved to Ben. Maybe I said this already about nine months ago from uh, Bellingham, Washington, and we're in. Um, uh, a community of, uh, I think it's 55 and older. Hmm. So, yeah, I think that's our situation. I came here because I thought there'd be people to meet and interact in here. Um, <clears throat> what other people have to say. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Naomi. Thank you. So I'm Greg Cast. My wife brought me here. She had a stroke in January of 17. She uh, does. She's not independent. She can't drive. She needs help with everything but reading. She can read, so she still has her mind and she can speak. Um, and we're living in the independent living portion of Hutchmark oh. here in Ben. And um, only because we have eight hours a day of caregiving on top of me as the primary caregiver. Um, I've aged, my body has aged, I don't know about me, my body has aged more than six years. Um, my knees in particular. I've had knee surgery on my right knee 11 months, 10 months ago. And now the left knee is acting up and I've already concluded that the other knee will get operated on at autopsy and not <laughs> um, recommend it unless she needs her knees to stay alive. <laughs> I like what the difference. I I'm, insp I'm inspired by listening to Naomi's story. Uh, it was kind of Frightening. She's got a husband. I've got a wife. She's got. He's got mobility, which is something my wife would give her eye teeth for, and her husband has the mobility. Um, no two strokes are alike. It's kind of frightening how you never see or hear about anybody stroke yes. experiences close to yours. Yeah. Um, what else can I say? We have a cat. Um, and I do all the cooking. My wife was the cook. So she lost a lot of things that were her, her thing. And um, I get to help 
try and patch that up. I don't do a great job. My inspiration in all this is uh, on the screen there, Debbie Bushland. When we first got back to Ben, she had a stroke in Southern California where we used to winter. When we came back, we were immediately hooked up with um, SAO and joined the stroke support group. And people like De Debbie was a rock then, and she still is in my mind. Um, <coughs> my inspiration. Ah, oh, thank you, Greg. I agree. Debbie is a rock. I actually leaned on her earlier. I thought, I I don't know what I'm stepping into. She said, I've been doing this for a while. So we had a great phone conversation earlier. So um, thank you, Debbie, for continuing to be a rock. Yeah. And Greg, I love the differentiation between your your body age and your age. I think that that's important. <laughs> And know. what is age? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll go to Gabriel and then the Humphrey family, and then we'll uh, venture on to Karen. Cool. Hey, everybody. I um, my stepdad Josh, uh, who told me about the group here. Um, he is my sound okay? Mm -hmm. I'm hearing some feedback, but um. Well, he had a stroke about a year and a half ago. Um, it is his second stroke that he's had. Um, the first one impacted his speech quite dramatically right away. Um, he couldn't speak very much at all. Um, and and um, actually we have a very funny story that we tell each other, but he, when he was in the hospital and, and he had just lost his capacity to speak, um, he was in the hospital room crying in bed and my mom walked in and went, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And he goes, no, 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 I'm watching Harry Potter. You know, he was watching a movie that had him in tears. <laughs> um, but uh, this, this particular stroke took him more physically. So his left side was quite paralyzed at first and, and he's regained a lot of his capacity over the past year and a half. Um, and I found myself living with my parents again, taking care of a family member, um, which I didn't expect. And I think that was probably the most, um, I think that was the most common experience through this is that just the, the constant interruptions that happen as a caregiver, like there seems to always be something to have to do and handle or food mm -hmm. or this or that. Yep. And there's like a constant, oh, this, then that, then that, one more thing and one more thing and one more thing. And then, you know, by the end of the day, I'm exhausted and I hadn't eaten. And um, I found myself truly burned out, I think, for the first time. Um, and I'm only 40 years old. And I was like, you know, I'm uh, tired, you know, and, and there was no kind of light at the end of the tunnel for me for a while. <clears throat> um, past six months have been a, quite an improvement um, for me. Um, I've been looking for support over the past six months and, and someone shared a, a course with me for caregivers that I did. It was truly, um, it really altered my experience of caregiving. Um, <clears throat> so I'm also participating with, a, with that group of people for uh, caregivers renewal. And <clears throat> so I've had my attention on myself again without, you know, you know, leaving my stepdad completely to his own devices. Um, and as he's recovered, he's gained a lot of capacity. Um, and he, I think mostly we struggle with his um, walking and um, balance. And it seems, I think we had higher hopes at first that he would recover m more than he has by now. Um, and he seems to be kind of stable at, this point he's improving slightly but um like just after the holidays just after christmas actually we the three of us all had covid and to have covid when if you don't exercise for a few days in a row you regress dramatically um it's been a it's all of a sudden sort of okay we're back a few months so there's sort of a 
of going forward, improving and going back and then improving and going back. Um, so I've heard it's like uh, death of a thousand cuts, you know. Um, so there's sort of like this constant and then there's all these interruptions. Oh, got to do this, got to do that. Um, so yeah, I mean, luckily, I think in my situation, I'm not the only person here. My mom has been a really the primary caregiver and I've been supporting both of them. And um, we kind of check in with ourselves a bit when we can to see when it's too much, you know, I'm doing too much. And we'll take a break and try to support each other. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the state of things. And that's how I got here. Um, he, he adores the group in Oregon. They've been a big support for him, so. You wanted me to meet you and you to meet me so yeah yeah nice to meet gabriel Thanks. and gabriel what's the name of the program that that you've been participating in that's been really oh. helpful um it's called the caregivers project for renewal caregivers um, project for renewal yeah it's actually a course that um was created by someone in the late 80s for huh. caregivers um who, uh, specifically around the time of the AIDS crisis because yeah. um, the caregivers were all burning out at that time. They didn't know what to do, or why things were happening. And um, so he designed a program for them and it was really meant uh -huh. to transform them. And they led it in hospitals for nurses and um, yeah. thousands of people. And was, so now they're kind of after COVID, I think they decided we wanted to hand it over to a group of people. So I participate around that group of people now. Yeah. Well, thank yeah, you. Yeah, it's been awesome. Thank sure. you for sharing, Gabriel. Yeah, no doubt. Thank you. All right. The Humphrey family, and then Karen, and then Valerie. Hello. Um, I'm John Humphrey, Michelle's husband, and Walter, my son. Um, he's 12. Uh, and Michelle had her stroke um, when Walter was two. Uh, mm -hmm. so that would have been about 10 years ago. Uh, ironically, she, she had her stroke um, in the hospital, um, mm -hmm. and I, I don't know many people who were in the hospital when, when they had their stroke, yeah. um, and I thought I was just headed over there to have um, uh, ultrasound done because she was pregnant at the time, and they said, no, you better, you better get over here, and the person I dropped off for the ultrasound was not the person who came out um, because her stroke was happening in front of, in front of me. Um, it affected her, her uh, cerebellum and her, uh, her part of her brainstem. Uh, she was uh, an inpatient in that uh, rehabilitation hospital for about five months. Um, it, they did wonderful work in preparing me and preparing her for, for the reentry. But no matter how much preparation <clears throat> they do, it, it still kind of felt like um, an airplane landing <laughs> with, with the wheels up uh, oh. because of the 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 significant deficits that she came home with at the time. Mm -hmm. um, her, she had, at the time, she had a, a food peg, so she couldn't uh, uh, have regular food. Her balance, um, strength, um, speech, pretty much everything was affected at that time. Um, I, I would say the most difficult thing early on was um, when you have a two-year-old and you have uh, somebody with, with that high level of need, you have to do about 25 things at once, and you can realistically maybe do three. And people look at you and judge you for the 22 you didn't get done, and you have to really prioritize really quick. Um, I also learned that it's a strange thing about time, how time can dilate. Um, you can't plan 10 years in the future anymore. You have to plan in like 15 minute increments your life. But you also have to be very patient because improvement doesn't come every third day. It might take six months to, for her to learn to hold a fork. And, and you, by being part of her rehabilitation process, you can see how difficult it was for her to get the most mild, um, the most mild uh, 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 kind of ability back. Um, and you really appreciate what the therapist put into her and how much she's put into her recovery. Um, and by the way, she's probably wanting me to say, um, this is one of the leftovers of the stroke. It's uh, the, um, the easy to cry, easy to laugh. Uh, it's called uh, PBA, the pseudobelver affect. So um, she always has me give a little song and dance of 
if she does this in public, it's not anything anyone said. It 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 comes and usually usually <laughs> resolves <laughs> uh, uh, very quickly. And and why we're here today, um, I'd heard great things about uh, the 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 main group that she participates in, and uh, she told us that tonight was going to be uh, more <laughs> caregivers. So we were happy to join. Okay, thank you, thank you, Walter. Do you have anything you'd like to add? Uh, not really, no. Well, we're happy you're here too. Thanks for coming. Welcome. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so Karen. Hi. Um, You've done a good job as a dad, but Walter. Okay, so my name's Karen Elliott, and I think it was a little over three years ago, my brother very strong, capable business owner of Advanced Northwest Welding had a major stroke and we got a call from his son when we were just coming back from Portland and they didn't expect him to live through the night and he had a, he can't speak and his left side is not functioning, but miracle after miracle and he got to come. I don't know, Debbie, was it one of the first stroke meetings in the conference room at the hospital? That was his <clears throat> first time to leave the room. And uh oh, <laughs> those are good tears of great memories of Lene and Debbie and Keith and beginning of that group. I would not have made it, and I think a whole lot of people wouldn't either without <clears throat> SAO. So, well, that was emotion. I didn't know it was coming, <laughs> but I guess it needed to, to be there. But anyway, so um, we have seen miracle after miracle, but um, it's very frustrating for him. Um, he's at a foster home in Bend. And in fact, we just took him out to lunch at Jake's truck stop today. And that was awesome. But he's so frustrated because his mind He's really good, but he can't speak. Um, and he's gotten to the point where he knows it and he's frustrated. In the meantime, my husband had a small stroke. And that was oh, about two years ago. And we also discovered at that time from a, a CT scan that he has the beginning stages of dementia. So we've been dealing with that and I had an irregular physical and I have to have a bone marrow biopsy soon and just different things. So um, yeah, we all know what life is like. And um, I didn't I didn't even know I was caregiving. You just do life, you know, mm -hmm. but I began to realize I was kind of tired and couldn't even talk sometimes. and. But then, you know, you always know it's, it's fine and you keep going, but um, you do need a break once in a while. And um, I have a good friend named Jesus and he keeps me going as long as I tune into SAO too. There, I just, it's amazing connecting with people, how much that helps. And um, yeah, so when I saw care the caregivers group today, I thought I missed it. I thought it was yesterday. I I don't know, been a little mixed up and I've forgotten things. So I sometimes think, hmm, maybe your load's a little heavier than you think it is, but I'm very grateful for where we're at. And I have an awesome brother and an awesome husband and I cook a lot and I'm glad. <laughs> um, so. Yeah, that's kind of where we're at. But I can't say enough about SAO and all the wonderful people. And I never liked technology. I wanted to turn on the TV, three channels, dial the phone, and use cash. And that was my lifestyle. And I wish it still was. But because of the stroke awareness, I am thankful for technology. And I don't talk bad about tech stuff anymore. <laughs> right. Thank you, Karen. Thank it's you. Thanks. Sometimes we just go through things and all of a sudden we think, wow, I'm overwhelmed. Yeah. <laughs> trying to do little by little and 
get through each moment and then all of a sudden we get we realize hmm. what might be going on so right I'm glad that you made time for yourself today to connect with everyone else oh, grateful to be here else. thank you thank you so we'll have that. oh and we almost died of COVID I forgot to tell you that too oh no <laughs> yeah <laughs> and we our finances our computer got hacked it has been a, a wild ride yes but we're still we're just holding on to that saddle horn and you just <laughs> Let her buck. You just do it. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Okay, thanks. I won't interrupt again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Is that what they do on Long Island, Gabriel? Do they hold on to the saddle horn too up there? No, we just interrupt. No. <laughs> <laughs> we roll right. with the punches here, I think. That's oh, okay. what we do. Yes. That's what you guys do. Okay. Uh, Valerie, and then Debbie, and then Joyce. Good afternoon. I'm Valerie Patterson from Corvallis. My husband, Jim, had his stroke in 2020 in July. And uh, that's when, you know, the world stopped for me, it seemed like. Mm -hmm. And most of us, because it was COVID time and the pandemic. And he's, we both worked really hard to get him moving and going and uh, his left side deficit is is much improved <clears throat> and he can walk and talk now and uh i would say his main deficit is cognitive um but he's probably not aware of it as much which probably is a good thing and uh i'm here this is actually my first caregiver meeting ever and I've been looking for two and a half years. So that's why I'm here. We're happy to have you. Thank you, Valerie. Thanks for taking a chance on us. He He's on the board of SAO. So I, he, I got the link. I was lucky. <laughs> there you go. Well, we're glad you're here. Thank, Thank you. you. Debbie and then Joyce and then Randy. Hello, family. Hello. My story and my husband's story, I guess our lives um, were uh, pretty professional, business oriented lives. <clears throat> we have no children. <clears throat> it's the second marriage for both of us. We've been together 27 years. Um, Bill had his stroke 2014 as he was getting ready for a important real estate meeting. He was quite active in Salem with real estate and he owned his own office in a <clears throat> rural town of Joseph, Oregon, up in the mountains, Wallowa Lake. And uh, overnight that changed, of course, he had a severe lacunar stroke. They told me at the hospital, our local hospital, that uh, I needed to find um, long-term care, skilled rehab, placement that he would not be able to come home. It would be too much for one person. Luckily, my background is an RN in rehab. And uh, we looked at each other, my husband and I, and we said, no, we're going to give this a go. And so overnight, we flew to Bend, got him into 30 days of inpatient rehab. And many of you know how <laughs> intensive that is. And then 30 days later, <clears throat> uh, he we moved into a relative's home here in Bend. They were in Florida or Arizona, and they gave us our, their home while a little townhouse was being built here on the south end of Bend. And we were able to move into that in April of 2015. So we've been making a go of it. And we never say no to rehab. Uh, it's it's the biggest part of our lives because it has to be. Uh, he has right-sided paralysis. Uh, he has difficulty uh, walking. He cannot use his right hand, even though we've had great strides with it over eight years. But you know, there's there's these little obstacles along this stroke journey. One of these obstacles is called is called um, tone. 
and that's a freezing of the arm that you're learning how to use again so you lose you lose time and and you go backward but we're used to going backward and forward and backward and forward and as long as we keep going to rehab and making it an important part of our lives and not getting frustrated we know that we can survive this for a long time uh, he has a wonderful attitude. He's aphasic, but he's able to speak slow to me. His mind is absolutely clear. Thank God. And uh, we have quite a good life here in Bend. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you. Wow. And, and a lot of you have, actually all of you have ended with something that is something that you're grateful for. We have a good life here in Bend. I'm thankful to <clears throat> have, and I cook, and I, and hearing that piece at the end of each of your stories show <laughs> that, that it's a tough, tough journey, and we're here to continue on and to make it happen, and, and we're grateful for another opportunity at life, so... Thank you, Debbie. Thanks for sharing that piece. All right, Joyce, and then Randy, and then Rosemary. Is that, is Rosemary. that right? Rosemary. Rosemary. Yes, Rosemary. Is that right? Yes, one word. Yeah, Rosemary. Rosemary. Wonderful. Yep. Okay, so we'll go with Joyce, and then Randy, and then Rosemary. <clears throat> Joyce, are you there? Maybe we'll skip to Randy for a little bit. Okay. Are you skipping to Randy? Yeah. Well, I, I want to apologize. I um, am not a caregiver. I am a stroke survivor. So I'm, I don't think I'm supposed to be on this group today. Well, welcome. We're glad you're here. Thank you. Thank you. So I, I can talk, I can speak, but I definitely have aphasia. And there are times when my words get jumbled up and I just can't get them out. So um, <clears throat> I could obviously keep on talking, but I think it would be better for caregivers to speak, not as a stroke survivor today. Okay. Well, Randy, where where are you calling from? <clears throat> um Hampstead North Carolina wow wow and how long ago was your stroke Randy almost 12 years it'll be 12 years in May okay um it's gotten much much better but it has been a challenge obviously and recovery is a never-ending process yep definitely and do you have someone do you have a caregiver that <laughs> been with you throughout the whole time or throughout the beginning or what what's your relationship with your caregivers i have a wife um she was obviously taking care of me from the get-go uh but i'm capable of taking care of myself now so it's changed a lot <clears throat> she goes to work and i actually do a lot of stuff um at home and i do teach a um, exercise class that I do three times a week. So I have stroke survivors, I have TBIs, I have all kinds of people that uh, like to be able to do what they can for exercise with movement. And it's all done uh, virtually. That's awesome. And how did that start for you, Randy? It started by me going to other support groups, and I did go to, I used to live in Northern Virginia, and there was a place there called the Stroke Comeback Center, right. and when I started going there, <laughs> exercise was one of the things that I was able to get involved with a trainer that was also helping other survivors. Uh, she also had a mother who had a stroke. She has passed away. But she has taught me an enormous amount of um, opportunities to be able to to um, teach the classes that I do. So 
I love uh, it. And I still get jumbled up with what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Bandy, you are a wealth of knowledge. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, well, thank sharing. you. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Joyce, are you there? Hello, Joyce? No. Rosemary, it's your turn. Okay. Well, uh, we, uh, we moved from New York to Northern Virginia to North Carolina, and now we are in uh, Grand Junction, Colorado. Uh, when we lived in North Carolina, we were in Holden Beach, so not far from Hampstead, and a lot of our uh, stroke support group people that we know are from Hampstead and Wilmington. Uh, <clears throat> my husband, his first stroke that he had was in uh, North Carolina in 2016. And from that, he, um, he had some processing issues, uh, but one of the major issues was the fact that he lost a good bit of his eyesight. But miraculously, with my prodding and pushing, um, he became um, an excellent artist, uh, oil, oil painting artist. And I was hoping that uh, we would get back to the, he would get back to that once we moved here to uh, Grand Junction. And the reason why we moved here was uh, I was at that point, you know, caregiver who was I, I do everything, everything that he used to do, what I do, and what we used to do together, I do completely. So, um, like all the others, I'm mostly overwhelmed every single day, but I'm very thankful that um, he's alive and we're together. And um, and the one, I'm not a nurse, but so I'm very thankful that he can at least take care of his personal needs, but everything else I, I have to do. We got here in Grand Junction at the height of COVID, at the end of uh, November of 2020. And within two weeks, he had four strokes in one day. Mm -hmm. And um, he again lost uh, even more eyesight. And uh, on top of that, uh, I was told that uh, good, he was gonna have a lot more cognitive issues, not just from the damage to the brain, but all, also because uh, he, he, they diagnosed him with uh, beginning uh, dementia. So um, he got out of the hospital and they were great in the hospital, uh, but there wasn't much in the way of support um, afterward. But within two weeks, he had another stroke. Uh, and so that set him back even more. So it's the last two years, it has been a real struggle to uh, get him to a point where, you know, he can converse with people. Um, you know, I've, I've been pushing him uh, to do various activities, you know, because of this neuroplasticity thing. And if it wasn't for my friends in North Carolina, who put me through the to SAO here, um, I've learned, I like for example, last week, I learned that there, I thought that neuroplasticity was only um, uh, specific to, you know, brain function, what, what you could teach yourself how to do. But there was a, um, a neuro or ophthalmologist from, uh, Bethesda, Maryland, not far from where we used to live. And he told us that with the type of problem that my husband oh, has with right. eyesight, uh, that he could help him. So, so anyway, I, uh, I looked into it and I did find so someone hard. here in Denver that... I'm going to have my husband uh, see, and I'm hoping that this will help him see well enough that maybe he could get back to painting because he was really good. Uh, it's been really very difficult, uh, but like I said, I'm very thankful. We're both very thankful that uh, 
he's alive. And the reason why we moved here was because uh, I have family here. We also have family in Northern Virginia, but I didn't want to go back there with all the traffic. So, so that's why we came to uh, Grand Junction, Colorado. And that's my story and I'm sticking to it now. <laughs> anyway. Thank you, Rosemary. Thank you. Yeah, it's one step forward, another step forward, one step back. One yeah, step that's step. been, There's that's been it. Yeah, well, also, you know, he, I, after the fifth stroke here, I brought him for, uh, you know, out of desperation from my reading and research, um, I got him, there was a place here in, in Colorado that did uh, stem cell transplantation. So I took him for that and also um, hyperbaric oxygen therapy. And they did some other things, which actually helped his blood pressure. Uh, sometimes I see glimpses of improvement. And like you said, one step forward, two steps back. It's, it's a constant battle. I don't know. But I, I'm, I'm willing to try anything and everything that I can do um, to, to help him function and have whatever time God has, gives us in this life together that it's somewhat fruitful <laughs> and happy, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Whatever time we have in this life, my grandpa had a stroke um, and then he had seven more years after that. And my mom just kept saying, it's bonus time. It's bonus time. You know, he wasn't able to speak, but he, his mind was fully there and he was really close with my mom. And so he was able to point things out and, and, and she could figure out what he was trying to say. And, and it's bonus time. It, it really, it really, really is. Um, it's a beautiful thing. I also love that you said pushing and prodding so that he could paint again. I think yeah. one of the difficult yet very important things about caregivers is, is the pushing, you know, I think that um, that's one thing that I'd roll my eyes at my mom, <laughs> but really now I'm so thankful that she was doing range of motion, that she was doing, because those things that, that are hard, they're helpful. So, so I'm sure that he's thankful for that, the pushing and prodding. Yeah. yeah well, he, he says I'm mean, but uh, then we <laughs> then, then we're all, we yeah, all mean. Right? <laughs> so our loving parents, right? Right. <laughs> uh, Heather, welcome. Are you here? Heather? No. Maybe not. So I'll give you a little bit of my story. I uh some of you might know, but I was um I was in college, I was 21, and um, what ended up happening is I had a blood clot the size of my pinky and the sinus straight, so the blood went into both hemispheres. Um, I ended up going into a coma for eight days, and um, they didn't think I was going to live. Um, they transferred me to a teaching hospital where they could do a medical trial, um, and the trial worked. Um, oh, and, um, it took a long time, um, getting back, getting, uh, everything back. Neuroplasticity was, um, very important. Uh, my brain scans still show the, the gray areas. Um, but, um, <laughs> yeah. And then it, um, I moved in with my sister and her family. And then my mom moved in with us and she was my primary caregiver um, throughout that time. Um, <clears throat> she also was the primary caregiver for her own dad who had a stroke. And she uh, was a caregiver for, for my uncle who had Lou Gehrig's disease. So she has a, a lot of, um, a lot of uh, experience in that way. She was a, a, a volunteer hospice worker for a, 
a long time, um, not on the nurse side, more on the spiritual accompaniment accompaniment side. So I have great um, respect for each of you. And um, I'm in awe of your daily work. And it's important work. And I think the most important work um, on this earth. So thank you for all that you do. Um, we only have 15 minutes left. Uh, I have a, a few um, ideas, but um, in closing today, uh, let's do one more share about, it's uh, thinking about what's your lesson in life today? What's life teaching you today? And then something for which you're grateful for today. Mm. That'll be our closing. I'm going to give you a silent moment to think so that you're not thinking while someone else is talking. So you're got it, which is you think like, got it, God. I know you're trying to teach me something today. And this is what you're trying to teach me. Ugh. And then the grace is like, oh, so thankful for this today. So you are got it and you're great. Take a moment to think of what those are for you. <clears throat> and then before we start sharing those, I'm going to throw this out to you. Um, Keith and Ben and I were trying to decide um do we do we record these meetings, these whole meetings, and send them out to people who can't come? Yeah, um, or is there a part that, of you guys that us. wants these to be confidential? Like, do we record uh, some of it, and then the other part we keep confidential? So or are you are you willing to share whatever There's comes up with whoever vision. wants it? Um, go ahead and type in the chat what you prefer, and then we'll look through those um, later. Because <laughs> really, this is a space for you. Uh, Heather, do you have a question? Or Heather, are you here? Yes, my video isn't working, sorry. And um, I came in late, <laughs> so I apologize for that as well. Um, I would like them recorded because I, I work. And so then I can, you know, just hear what all of you have to say. It's really helpful to me. Um, so. <clears throat> oh, thank you for sharing, Heather. Thank yeah. You. And Heather, we didn't have an opportunity to, to get to know you. Do you want to share mm -hmm. your story with us? Sure. Um, so my husband had two strokes um, at the beginning of August. Oh. I'm just having a hard couple of days. <laughs> Usually we're really good. Um, but I, I actually called Babette this morning because I've met her and she was super encouraging just kind of reminding me of some things to keep in mind. And um, I guess the thing that I'm focusing on right now, um, and my husband's doing really well, um, but still his left side and hand and arm and fingers are all still really numb. And he has some uh, processing uh frustrations where he can't multitask and he gets tired so that's kind of where we're at it's been about six months um but my focus is to have grace um or maybe you could say margin because um I feel like I need to have more grace for him as he's recovering and also remind myself that this is hard. <laughs> Life is different. So, but I, you guys got me at a vulnerable time right now. So, um, but that's just kind of where I'm at. <laughs> thank you for sharing, Heather. Mm -hmm. We all have vulnerable times. So thank you for sharing where you're at right now. Yeah. Sure. 
Yeah. Where are you calling from, Heather? Uh, we live in Sun River. Oh, you do? Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Well, okay, crew. So our got it. What lesson is, is are we being taught today? And the grace, what are we thankful for today? This is kind of our, our closing, how we're going to wrap it up. We only have 10 minutes left. So we'll go around um, like we did um, before as we started. Naomi, do you mind starting us off again? Not at all. I'm, I'm trying to concentrate on what I'm supposed to say. Um, what am I aware of today? Or, or Yeah, um, what's your lesson today? Of, of how many people are affected and so many have such a long journey that they're working through and how difficult it is. But one thing that has helped me since New Year's, for some reason, this word popped into my mind and it helps me and it's compassion. Mm. Compassion to my husband so that I'm not losing my cool that I'm more helpful, that I'm a, that he's trying and I'm aware of his situation and to be more, more helpful, I guess, not to expect a tremendous amount, but whatever he can give is, is what he can give. Mm -hmm. And just to be compassionate. Thank you, Naomi. Yeah. Great. My, my word is expectations. Your, your mother, Molly, is probably going to be a saint at some point in the future <laughs> with all the things you ascribe to her. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they were all accurate. Um, I, um, I'm not looking for sainthood. I'm just looking for being able to get through from one day to the next. Um, sometimes I'm a crutch for my wife sometimes she's a crutch for me even though she's lying in bed and and relatively helpless as I try to do what I'm supposed to do whatever that might be so the expectations and just listening to all of us um the, the paths that we're on are more than just caregiving I mean you're you're your priest and your bottle washer and your God knows what else. Um, and uh, you didn't sign up for any of this. And uh, but that's, that's not the way it is. You, you, you've got to do what you got to do. And I think you've all become inventive in our ways of trying to solve our, our interaction with stroke. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. We'll go with uh, Karen, and then the Humphrey family, and then Debbie. I think what comes to mind is, um, oh goodness, a lot of things, but the blessing of togetherness, that we're all in this together. There's a lot of strength, and everybody's got challenges, but this <clears throat> program reminds me how we're not alone, even when we feel like we're really alone. Um, yeah. And somebody, when somebody's down, somebody else is up. And when somebody's weak, somebody else is strong. And it's um, <clears throat> just, you know, there's always something good that comes out of something hard. And I, the goodness has been to meet and know so many people from, from local area here, but across the whole country. And there's a lot of wonderful people in the world. Even when things look kind of crummy on the edges, there is such heart and such compassion in so many people. I'm grateful for that. Thank you, Karen. Humphrey family, Debbie, and then... <clears throat> Walter was going to go first. The lesson that I think um, for today would be just be kind to anyone and everyone you meet because you can never really know what they're going through mm. in that moment and you might make 
incorrect assumptions or make their day or week or month like worse if you're not kind and you can really make someone's day if you're just being genuinely kind to anyone and this and I think that I would be grateful for today would be like the state of recovery that my mom is in because we've come a long way from like when it first happened to where we are now because she can do a lot more um things now and she's doing much better than she first was which I am really grateful for that we're in the state of recovery wow. right now and I would just add um, a lesson. I, that lesson in the grateful. I'm just going to do kind of macro <clears throat> what I've learned total. Um, this is embarrassingly obvious, and so it's going to sound like you needed a stroke to know this. But um, what this has taught me is the true separation between who the person is and their body. Um, like that that movie. I think it's the dive bell and the butterfly. That what you would have is just like a, a, a scuba suit, but the person I'm taking care of is not the suit. The person I'm taking care of, <clears throat> the person inside that. And, and this stroke has really showed me how utterly separate those two things are. Um, and what I'm grateful for is that when it happened, as, as awful as the circumstances were, it happened at a time where I had an employer who was extraordinarily generous with their time for me to be able to be there. Um, <clears throat> I had what I felt was some of the best rehabilitation and neurologists th that you could hope for, um, supportive family. And um, I'm gonna end it with a, a very true story. Um, we also were very blessed by God. Um, there was a moment where I thought very early on in her return home that I, I didn't think it, I was gonna make it with a very small child and somebody who couldn't stand up without a gate belt. Um, she needed 24 hour care essentially. And I, I remember the day I, I prayed to God because I felt like my back was against the wall for help. And I had not finished that prayer when Michelle said, John, and she had me turn around. And for the first time since her stroke, she was standing on her own without the need of a gate belt. Now, she wasn't allowed to do that. The rule was she was supposed to ask for help when she got up. So I didn't see her get up. Um, but when I reached out uh, to God, he, he answered in that moment. So that's what I'm most grateful for. Mm. Thank you. Debbie. Well, caregiving, I used to teach this. Caregiving is about <clears throat> providing them with dignity, always. And you can teach and you still don't learn. Mm -hmm. And that has been a struggle for me to always provide dignity for Bill. And that's what we can keep coming back to. And when we realize that, <clears throat> that dignity for not only the things we've gone through in our family, but dignity in the lives of all of you, the world needs to realize that this stroke is not the person. Yeah. And I think everybody here gets that. And maybe we can share that with the rest of the world. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you. Randy and Rosemary, and then Heather, and then Keith. We, it's four o'clock right now. Some of you might be on a tight schedule. Um, if you are, thank you for coming. Other than, and I'll stick around. Sorry for going over a little bit. <clears throat> Randy. <laughs> well, uh, gratefulness is an amazing process. So recovery is an amazing process. So, um, you know, I can't really say much more than that. Then um, I'm just thankful of what I've been able to accomplish after what has happened to me. So. Mm. Thank you. And thanks for sharing your story today, Randy. That's really Rosemary, Heather, and then Keith. Well, um, I'm extremely grateful for um, along the way in this process, uh, I've come in contact with some wonderful people 
and um, and their willingness to share, which has helped me um, be able to deal with uh, some of the hardships that you know one has to um, encounter when you're dealing with a severe health issue. Um, I've I have learned that uh, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And I have learned that I didn't die, thank God, but I am stronger than I thought that I could ever be because my husband, uh, we've been together 56 years, uh, married 53 out of the 56. And um, that's a long time. We grew up together and, um, and we, you know, got through a lot together. And, but he was an extremely strong uh, man and personality and he took care of an awful lot of things that I took for granted. Now, all of a sudden, bam, it's fallen into my lap and I'm doing not just what I had to do, but all the things that he used to do and all the things that we did together. And it's overwhelming, but I found out that um, through this process, I'm a bit stronger than I ever anticipated that I could ever be. Because when it first happened, I thought I was going to die. I, I didn't think that I'd, I'd make it through. But like I said, I, I I'm very thankful God brought me. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's funny how the Lord works in mysterious ways that. You know, they bring you people that help you get through the whole thing. It's, and then family, thank God for family. We have a great family. I have wonderful children. So I feel I, you know, despite all of the, the stuff that's gone on, I feel extremely blessed. At times I'm, a, I'm an ogre to, <laughs> to get my husband to do things, but you know, afterward and he's done, done it. And I said, see, my bitchiness has really <laughs> come through for you, you know? So anyway, that's about, that's about all I can say. Uh, Rose Marie, it's, we're stronger it's, than we think we are. Yeah. And it's like the, the bodies of the stroke warriors, right? Yeah. Little by little, they're pushing themselves every day. And each of you are pushing yourselves every day <laughs> and working and growing and growing and working we think we can't do it but then we do it and we're like wow. well not only that but you see other people who who you thought that you were the only one and you thought that your situation was the worst thing on earth and then you see other people who had it 10 times 100 times worse than you and you say oh my gosh how did they do it i'm just a wimp what's the matter with me you know <laughs> None of you are wimps, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Not a wimp in the room. Right. <laughs> Thank you, Rosemary. Thank you. Heather, we're sure either a lesson or a gratitude. Um, I would say, oh man, uh, I was trying to think about this as, there, as you were talking, but also trying to listen. Um, I, this is kind of a, weird one but I feel like this is refining mm. <laughs> it's like um being in the refiner's fire mm. um you know to get gold so it's completely pure it has to be put in the fire to get out of it, its impurities and so I kind of think of it like that like it's really hard, but there's blessings along the way. Like you just said, <laughs> Rosemary, um, yeah. you know, God brings people in your life right when you need them, people yeah. you weren't expecting or, right. you know, like um, Humphreys, you said like you're praying to God and then just when you needed it the most, you know, your wife stood up and so I think it's just looking at all of those. If we have our eyes open, uh, then we um, 
can see those glimpses of beauty in the ashes. So that's kind of what I'm thinking is like, I'm glad I'm not the same person I was yesterday. And I used to think that I couldn't do a lot of things. Nobody would think that of me, but um, yeah, I feel like, wow, I can, I'm doing it. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I can do it, but I'm doing it. So I'm thankful for that process. One foot in front of the other. One foot, one step at a time. Thank you, Heather, the refinery. It's true that in those moments, it's hot, it's hard, it's fire. I can't handle it. And then sometimes you look back and you're like, wow, we've come this far. But in the moment at three o'clock on Tuesday or whatever, it doesn't feel like you've come that far. But no. man, you have. Keith, I'm going to hand it over to you. Do you have something you'd like to say? Oops, you're on. I can't hear you. But you're not on mute. I'm not sure what's going on. Is that better? <clears throat> yep, there you are. Okay. I turned my mic off. <laughs> I just wanted to say a couple of quick things. Um, first of all, thank you guys, all of you, for coming on this molly is a fantastic person she's doing a fabulous job and it's gonna continue to grow i just want to you know some things are on my mind quick quick you guys are so important you're so important to everybody to us stroke survivors um it's huge what you do you don't get any credit you know, half the time we don't think to say stuff to you guys. And um, you need to know how important you are. And even if it's self brought in, uh, please understand how important uh, you guys all are and that you're so appreciated um, to the end of the earth. I'm not kidding you. I just want to thank you guys so much. I don't know if I'll be on these calls very often because I want the caregivers to have their own time and um, and say what's on your mind. It's important that you get to say what's on your mind and and grow from that. So I just want to say thank you guys so much. Thank you, Molly. Um, you guys are so important. And, you know, <laughs> I could not believe the wisdom that came out of Walter's mouth. Yeah. Buddy. Uh, you may not see it now, bud, but things happen for a reason and you're going places, pal. So I care for you too. That was it. Before I lose it, I'm going to jump off. <laughs> Bye. Thanks. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, Karen, did you want to say something? Is that a hand? Yes, it's a hand. I just was about to say similar things that Keith did about Humphrey's son. You can hear yes. an amazing future in that young man's voice, yeah. his words, his heart. I am impressed. And you yes. kind of get doubtful about the future. But that young man, yeah. he's something else. Yes, indeed. Yep. Absolutely. Agreed. Thank well, you for being such great parents. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. You never know. As a, you never know as a parent what sinks in and what moves on. So for tonight, at least. <laughs> I appreciate your comments. <laughs> I love All it. Right. Well, thank you. Thank you. We'll meet the first Wednesday of every month. Um, similar to this, we'll have an in-person and Zoom um, um, availability. So thank you. Okay, great. Um, thank you. Thank you, Molly. Thank you very much. Yes, yes. Thanks for sharing. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.